Hi there. It's really great to be able to share with you some thoughts about digital transformation, especially in this time of COVID-19 and exponential change. I've been contemplating this for this topic for a while and I want to share some thoughts of you, with you. And I want to actually start back in the olden days, last century, when I first started working in marketing, my very first marketing job. And I got it because I realised they had better champagne in marketing than in uh, finance and IT where I had previously worked. And I used to manage the direct mail campaigns for, for the credit card marketing division in the bank that I worked in. And I was responsible for tracking our progress. We had long involved conversations about the best location inside a newspaper, inside a broadsheet to put an ad, or the best time of day to put a TV commercial on. And that was our world. And things have changed so much. And really the world that I lived in in those days was very much like in this picture where everything was manual, nothing was automated. Uh, so, and Excel was a huge innovation for us to be able to track things. And now we live in a totally different world. Now we live in a world where they're saying that data is now the world's most valuable resource. And everybody is talking about undertaking digital transformations. And I do believe that COVID is making this digital transformation in, increase exponentially. Uh, who would have thought everybody could go home and work from home successfully uh, six months ago? But here we are. And data underpins everything to do with digital transformation. And I think people are only just starting to join the dots on that particular issue. But it's not the new oil. A lot of people talk about data as the new oil and I don't think the analogy holds. Oil is super expensive. It's, it's expensive to find and increasingly so. Uh, it's really hard to transport it's really, really expensive to transport oil. Oil is actually a finite resource and data is not. Data is produced at vast quantities relatively inexpensively. And data is much more varied than oil. There's a huge amount of variation in the kinds of data that we keep. And you also don't just store oil in the hopes that one day you might need it. And we all do that with data. Data is really different to oil, but it is still the foundation of the future. So it's worth keeping that in mind. A number, a number of organizations have said, and this is looking at financial services, that digital transformation was their top priority. It's been their top priority for years. And no one quite nailed it. Everybody was always going to do digital transformation or was planning to. And so, but now we've been forced to, to do this in real, real time because of COVID. And any organisation that is not digitally transforming itself right now is going to die. It's literally going to die because it will not be able to operate in this new world. So it's worth pondering what underpins digital transformation. First of all, let's, let's talk about data because I said it's, it's, we keep a lot of it. We are going to be storing so much data that it will be counted in the zettabytes. And when, when I started at the University of New South Wales, I was walking around talking to researchers to find out how much data we were dealing with. And I had to stop counting when I got to exabytes because I couldn't do the math in my head anymore. Zettabytes, I can't even imagine how big a zettabyte is, but there are analogies on the internet. Suffice it to say, there is going to be a huge amount of data. And the real trick will be working out what is noise and what is signal. And to have an idea of what 
in what elements of that data can be turned into useful and usable information. Because trawling through 175 zettabytes is going to be very expensive. And already in 2017, we had marketers saying that they had reached the point where their ability to capture data had exceeded their ability to take data-driven action. And so we need to get smarter about how we do this. And the other important insight is to consider that data is not neutral. So choosing to keep this data and not that data, you've already made a qualitative decision about the data. You've potentially made a biased decision. So it's important to understand that data is not neutral. But, and you need to think about if you're storing all of this data, what are you going to do with it? And also to ask a question, what purpose it is serving? And now we have the ability to do things like this natural language experiment where Air Canada uh, did some experiments with um, using AI to generate sales. And they discovered that if they used anxiety language over exclusivity or safety language, they got more conversions. And those kind of things are really important because they're the, they're the things that we will be able to do now. We will be able to say, we're going to use anxiety to drive sales. That's a really effective sales technique, but is it really ethical? Should we be doing it? There's really interesting questions coming up now. But we're all going to do it because we can, because it is now possible. And it's interesting to look at the hype cycle for digital marketing and advertising. This is from last year. And every single thing on this page is underpinned by data. Every single thing on this page is basically part of digital transformation. And very few organisations are contemplating this as a holistic and strategic initiative and working out how that they can consolidate their data and how that they can build data-driven capabilities across their organisation that will allow them to do these kinds of things. So it's really important to start to consider what what you need to build. Now, all of these sorts of things need to be managed. So your organisation needs to be considering managing its digital assets, needs to be tracking workflow, it needs to be tracking content, and it increasingly needs to track it across not just websites and digital marketing content and social media, but it needs to do it across uh, potentially Internet of Things devices as well. So the landscape is getting increasingly complex. And this diagram, I think, sums up the kind of landscape that we need to be thinking of. So I, th I think that this idea of looking at systems of records, like where you store your customer information or your um, content and those sort of things, is really important. So the notion of a system of record is important. And again, systems of intelligence. So the analytics layer over the top of those systems of record. And then thinking about systems of engagement and thinking about all of the ways that we engage with our customers and stakeholders. And then finally, and the thing that's starting to emerge is the systems of things. And these are all of the Internet of Things or IoT devices that are starting to prevail now. And they're things from, you know, your, your Apple Watch or your um, mobile phone, uh, your VR, your virtual reality or augmented reality headsets, all of those sorts of things. So this is starting to be the landscape that an organisation needs to work out how to deal with. So digital transformation has kind of, is kind of happening under the covers without us realising that it's happening. And because we're not realising it's happening, we're not necessarily thinking strategically about what we need to do to enable it, especially for people that are doing this now in response to COVID instead of last year at their own time and pace. 
and increasingly now, uh, data is driving AI and machine learning. So this is very much part of the landscape and people are now starting to try and use AI to, to drive uh, customer centric actions and also to automate customer interactions. So there's a, a great growth in customer facing bots and virtual assistants and just about everybody has, has one now. But underpinning all of this is needing to be able to connect off to all of your systems and data integration is the fundamental thing that enables that to happen. So your organisation needs to be building strong capabilities for data integration and going alongside that you need to be able to manage structured and unstructured data and by that I mean data that is in databases and neat, neatly and nicely organised, but then increasingly unstructured data, so things that are in PDFs, Word documents, data lakes, and you need to be able to understand that, so you need to have metadata over the top so that you can understand what you've got in there. And then you also need the capability for data merging, migration, and replication, so how do you work out what data is where and how do you get it there? And thinking about where you put it uh, for analytics and AI and ML. Could be a data warehouse, could be a data lake, but you really need metadata management across that. And as sure as anything, you are going to need to be able to connect out to your legacy applications and databases, and you're also going to have a bunch of third party interfaces. And that's going to be the fundamental problem that most organisations will grapple with over the next few years is the data integration challenge. Uh, we're, we're grappling with it ourselves at the university. Um, and I think everybody else is in one form or another. This nice diagram of, of kind of the data stack that you need, so you've got your data infrastructure and increasingly that is cloud-based. Uh, people are now realising that having their servers in rooms in a building that they have to go and patch and things like that is not helpful. So now increasingly data infrastructure is cloud infrastructure. You need data governance over it so that you can, uh, first of all, understand what you've got and then understand what needs to be protected and how you can protect it. So cybersecurity is a really big part of data governance. And then you need some data ops. You need, it's like DevOps, but for data. So you need to have processes and tools so that you can make sure that you're managing your data properly and you know what is where. And then once you've got all of that, you can start to do data analytics over the top of it. There's things like data, data warehousing, but also you can then move into doing data science. So you can start to find those nuggets of insight that can drive interesting decisions. And then across the top of that, you'll be starting to put your AI and machine learning and with the hope that you can start to automate that entire process. And this is a, such a neat stack. It's not neat like that in real life at all. In real life, this is what it really looks like. So you've got your whole bunch of disconnected silos that you need to join up and putting some order over that is probably the first priority of most organisations. And it's a real challenge. And I've got to tell you, I think the starting point for this is data governance. This, this is a diagram of, of our data world. Uh, we connect to our source systems, reading from the left to the right. Uh, we do business transformations and apply business rules. And then we put it into our data warehouse or our data lake. And then we present it to the business and then our data scientists can query it through the data lake. And what we're doing is building this capability so that we can run AI and machine learning across all of this data. And that's uh, taken us uh, to 18 months to build. 
So it's it's not a trivial undertaking uh, in any any sense. So I want to talk a bit about some of the lessons learned, and we are still learning these lessons. The first one is is integration does matter and building capability in integration is utterly fundamental for, for having this capability in your organisation. And you need to have integration can be system to system integration or it can be AI driven. And nowadays it's really better if you can start to use a APIs uh, to, to use APIs to do your integration because it streamlines things so much. And that's stuff that we're working on right now. The other thing that's really important is getting people out of their silos. It was already super difficult um, when we were all in the office. And now during COVID-19, it's, it's really challenging. Um, we're really lucky because we have uh, we were an Office 365 uh, organisation for a couple of years before COVID hit us. So we were really already using the tool set and using Teams and things like that. Um, so that's been a real benefit for us. But working out who the stakeholders are and engaging them is, is really important. Uh, across this whole digital transformation journey. Even if you're not calling it digital transformation, that's what you're doing. The other important thing is the need to get analytics capabilities out across the organisation. If you bottle them up in one central group, all they will do is disappoint everybody because there is so much demand for analytics. So really starting to think about how you can build the capabilities across the organisation and get analytics out into the hands of the people. Democratising data analytics is probably the most fundamental thing that we're working on right now. And the other thing is, is building measurement in, is baking metrics into everything that you're doing because I've tried, it's actually really hard to retrofit metrics into something that's already happening. So building measurement in so that you can start to see what's working and what's not. And really for us, I'm finding that the budget constraints that we're all under, um, so my organisation, uh, the publicly stated figure that we of revenue that we lost this year was 600 million. Uh, so we have budget constraints, quite severe ones. And, but I'm finding those are really helping us focus. And that's a benefit that we can now focus, whereas before we were scattering our energies across so many things that it was really hard to get people to focus. So I think focus is, is really important. The whole thing with digital transformation, whether your organisation is doing it consciously or unconsciously, is to recognise that it's happening and to see what are the levers that you've already got that you can pull to help it happen. Uh, so we, we've realised that, that Office 365 is a really big benefit for us in transitioning to being a digitally adept organisation because it means that people can communicate across silos and that's so important for enabling us to meet our customer needs. Our, our students are our customers. And so we're working and we're able to communicate across silos using Microsoft Teams, as part of the Office 365 suite. So that's a really simple example of using some of the tools that you already have to enable the front end digital transformation happen. And just to give you an idea, at, at UNSW, um, some of my colleagues, as, early, as late as January, were saying, oh, my course is so special and unique, it can never go online. And I can tell you, by the end of February, every course was online. So COVID ha has been really great for helping us transform our organisations. Who thought that all of us working from home right now was even possible? But 
COVID actually made it possible. So the important thing is going to be taking all of the lessons that we've learned through COVID and working out how we can apply them to our, when we go back to the office. But fundamental stuff, getting data right because it underpins everything that you want to automate. Underpinning that is data quality and underpinning that is people getting people out of their silos and getting them to collaborate. So thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your time and please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.